What's going on YouTube? So today I am troubleshooting a few issues on my ignition and I wanted to show you guys something that I learned uh, from somebody else. <laughs> so rotor phasing is something that can be adjusted with an aftermarket ECU and basically what that is is the relation of your rotor in relation to all of these I call them pins inside or pickups for each of your spark plugs. So if you have a distributor style ignition Checking your rotor phasing is important, especially if you've got an aftermarket ECU. The thing that you need to check is that as your engine revs up, you need to make sure that the position of that rotor does not get to be to where it's off from the cylinder. So here is a good way to check that I was shown, and I'm going to pass on to you guys. So I bought a cheapo distributor cap, and I've got a timing light here. And I've got this guy hooked up to the battery, obviously, and then to spark plug number one. So I drilled a hole in between where the rotor would be and where spark plug number one is. And what I'm going to do is start the car and shine my timing light at that hole and see where the rotor is in relation to the pin for this spark plug number one as I rev the engine up. Now what we want to see is that it stays in the same spot all the way through as it's firing that. But most times with aftermarket ECUs, there's a factory offset that has to be put in there. So right now, I run a mega squirt, and you can see, so there is my offset. Right now we're at zero degrees offset. So I'm going to start this up, and I'm going to show you guys how to check it. It's pretty simple. It's going to be loud, so bear with me. If it wants to stay running. So hopefully what you guys saw there, I know it's kind of hard to hear, but uh, hopefully you guys saw there that as we were coming around, our rotor was staying pretty close to in line. Um, if I rev it up really high, like 5,200 RPMs-ish, then what happens is the rotor kind of moves a little bit. So if it moves to where it's too far off, then you have an issue. But for right now, mine looks pretty good. And the issue with mine revving is more than likely with the TFI module I replaced on this distributor when it went bad. Um, but I wanted to make sure that we didn't have any issues with our rotor phasing being off uh, before I went chasing parts. I always like to try to figure out what's wrong with it before I just go throwing parts at something. But anyway, that's a quick and dirty on checking your rotor phasing. Now if you do notice that it's off, what you can do is check, so we'll turn this back on here. So if you do happen to notice that your rotor phasing is a little bit off, you can adjust that in a couple of different spots, and I'll show you. So this is a mega squirt. This is actually a full version of Tuner Studio running on a dash that I built. Let me get my keyboard fired up. So on this, if you go into your ignition settings and your trigger wizard, if it's off all of the time, then you can put a standard offset in here. I think on the uh, the last ECU setup I had, it was three, and I've kept it at that 
And just because when it revs up really high, sometimes it's off. But you can also, uh, let me burn this real quick. You can also adjust it due to ignition, ignition options. There's another spot for it right down here. All right, so if you look, let me get this into the right spot. Tough doing this one-handed, but right here, if you can read that, so spark hardware latency should only be used if you notice spark retard with increasing RPMs. So if you have an issue where as your RPMs uh, cause it to be off and it's only RPM related, you can put a time in here and that will actually delay it also. So that will actually move it as the RPMs go up to keep your rotor phased correctly. Now that's only if you're using a distributor style ignition, but I think that you kind of get the point. So now that I know that my rotor phasing is correct, I know that my issue is going to be somewhere else. And when I when I originally turn this off so you guys can hear me. Thanks, T. I appreciate that, buddy. So what I learned. Um, what I've learned is that the cheaper TFI modules are usually not quite as good. This one was a cheapo that I bought just because it was the only one available from O'Reilly's. The one that was on this distributor was a Motorcraft one, and I've had it for years and years and years, and it went bad. So what I've learned is the cheaper TFI modules will typically heat soak and go bad faster. So I'm going to try to find a Motorcraft one. I couldn't because when I put this together, it was a Father's Day Sunday. <laughs> So I'm going to try to find an actual uh, Motorcraft TFI module or an AC Delco or something a little bit better to try to uh, get my spark issue resolved. But at least now that I know my, uh, my rotor phasing is correct, I know that I'm not chasing any issues with that. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to swap back. I'm going to swap back to this other cap just because it doesn't have any holes in it. You don't want to get any water in there, but Hopefully that helps you guys, and if you're having some issues with rotor phasing, put it in the comments below. I'll do what I can to help you. Um, you can also, it's always, see I got two holes in here. It's a good idea to check on a couple of different cylinders just to make sure that rotor phasing is not being affected by anything else. So, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. I'm going to go grab a TFI module and see if I can't get this thing uh, revving better because there's something that's holding it back. There should be no reason why I can't rev past 4,000 RPM, especially with this new intake manifold. Um, the rotor phasing is correct. I verified that. So we're going to keep chasing it. We're going to figure it out. And we're going to make some more power. It needs to make more than 266 horsepower. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you later.